Do you know what is the full form of PPA? Do you know how much important is PPA in VLSI chip design? Do you know how PPA impacts both pre-silicon and post-silicon domains? Stay tuned till the end of the video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, introduction. We will discuss about power, performance and area. We will introduce you to the power, performance and area concept in VLSI. Next, we will go in detail of the power optimizations what are done in VLSI. Next point, we will talk about the performance optimization. Next, we will cover the area optimization. So here we will conclude our episode after discussing all the points that means power, performance and area. So we will go in detail of each of them. However, we will stay ourselves restricted to the general methods, not to specific any methods of any particular EDA vendors or any specific tool. The general methodologies we will talk through this episode which are followed in the VLSI domain and there may be slight variation from one EDA vendor to another EDA vendor in some particular design or domain or some particular area. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. Here we will brief about the power, performance and area, this particular concept in VLSI. The major challenge in VLSI design are area, performance that is frequency and power consumption. You can understand that nowadays we are going up with the frequency that means we are we have already crossed the gigahertz range and we are entering into the terahertz range. Today wearable devices are very small and tiny like your smartwatch and they contain a very less area than the older days gadgets. And power consumption is very important because today we have our devices operated mostly on on rechargeable batteries and the batteries should retain their charge for at least a couple of hours so that you can have your product running for that particular period. Next, in micro powered battery operated portable devices such as cell phones, smartwatch and wearable medical devices, the target is to keep the battery lifetime long and area or weight reasonable. So this is what I have just touched based in the previous line and I was talking and this is in explicit mode that we have to be their area should be less and the battery lifetime that means the rechargeable battery should go longer duration as much as possible. Next, in such devices, leakage power during the off state is a major power management concern. So this is a very important thing because when you are having a rechargeable device along with you, probably you can carry it in your pocket or you can wear it maybe in your wrist or some other body parts. So that time when the device is not operating, that means mostly it is in off state, maybe you have switched it off or it has gone to the auto power of mode or maybe in a sleep mode. In that particular time, you have to be very power efficient. That means the device has to save power so that the recharge batteries should run as much as possible. We already have an entire episode on low power design. I have provided the link in the description. So please go ahead and watch that. We have talked about different type of power consumption from transistor level up to the CMOS level and all those how are impacting in the VLSI. So here in this particular presentation, I will uh, go for the briefing and comparison of all those methods that I have already talked about there and we will have a comparison here only. For detailed understanding, please watch this particular episode. Please see the description of this video to get the URL of the video. Next, to chisel higher performance from the same design, various optimization techniques are used. While achieving the timing convergence and gain power, we must not have any negative impact on the overall efficiency. So this is the kind of uh, trade-off we should be looking carefully and we should be handling it tactically through the design methodologies. Next, analysis and optimization of the overall timing is bare necessary to improve the frequency and performance. So why the timing is necessary? Because of the frequency. F is 1 by T by the definition. That means the timing, that the time period and the all the violation related with the timings is very much important. In case you are interested, we have an entire series on static timing analysis and the link is provided in the description. So you can go ahead and see what all errors related to the timings are usually come in the VLSI design and how they are circumvented. Now we are done with this particular slide and let's move on to the next slide. 
power optimization. Here, in this particular slide, we will talk about the general methodologies which are used for the power optimization. And we have an entire episode of the details from the transistor level power to consumption and different power dissipation methods. We are reaching from the transistor level up to the CMOS level and uh, you can find the link of the video in this video description. Please go ahead and watch. Here we are going to compare the different methodologies we have already talked about or we may have touch based. So here is a comparison chart. So here in the first column we have techniques. Next we have the dynamic power reduction, then the leakage power reduction and the other power optimization technique that we are using. So we are talking about power. For detailed understanding of the dynamic or the leakage power and what are the component, please go ahead and watch the video that we have just talked about and link is in the description. So now clock gating for this method, the dynamic power reduction comes from the clock gating itself. Next comes the leakage power. So in this methodology, that means in the clock gating, we have to minimize minimize the usage of the low VT cells that is LVT. LVT stands for low VT cells. These are standard cells. You can have them in your standard cell library and other power optimization comes from the metal oxide devices that is the MOS structure. So here we are done for the clock gating part. Now let us go for the power gating. Power efficient techniques right. We use it for the dynamic power reduction. Next we use the power gating itself the power gating method itself for the leakage power reduction and for other kind of power optimization technique we use the minimize the capacitance by custom design. Now in case you do not know what is a custom design we have a full episode and I provide the link in this description so where you can directly jump onto that particular episode to understand what is the custom and semi custom design. Design methodology in real SI. We are done here comparing for the power gating. Now we have a variable frequency. In case you are having difficulty in understanding, please go ahead and watch the episode of the low power video that I have just talked about few minutes ago to understand all these things. All these things those are in the left hand side. So if we vary the frequency, we do the dynamic power reduction by the variable frequency and leakage power reduction by back biasing. Now, what is a back biasing? Back biasing means the substrate biasing for the CMOS structure. There is a methodology for providing a back bias. Generally, we keep it constant. But however, if we change the back bias, that means the substrate bias of the MOSFET, then the different kind of power reduction comes into place. Basically, the substrate leakage is controlled through the back biasing and other optimized methods used here is the power efficient circuit design. This is a kind of uh, different methodologies of different houses that in different design houses have different power efficient circuit design methodologies of their own. Once you are in a VLSI company you will get in detail but however you have to keep coming back to this particular episode and going back to your company's uh, methodologies to correlate the things that I am talking about because in the first slide or in the very beginning of this video I have talked about that I will touch base the things in a very generic manner because in different companies different uh, type of terminologies are used so that their different uh, trade secrets are kept in a proper way so that uh, you are tied only inside the company but however I, I cannot uh, go in every company's detail but here that's why I have touch based in a general format and once you go there in your company and uh, you come across this kind of terms and you come back to this slide hear my voice in this video and then you will be able to correlate very easily. Now next uh, is the variable voltage supply. So first the dynamic power reduction comes from the variable voltage supply methodologies. Next the leakage power reduction is achieved by the reduced oxide thickness. That means we engineer the oxide thickness. Reduce oxide thickness. Different methodologies are used. Sometimes we use the high K dielectrics and also all those things are there in the VLSI domain. And for other optimization it is not applicable here. So we have put NA as the abbreviation to the not applicable. Next, we go for the variable device threshold. That means we vary the VT of the MOSFETs. And here in the dynamic power reduction, we have the variable island. And for leakage power reduction, we use FinFET. Maybe we use a bulk CMOS or maybe we use a SY CMOS, whatever is applicable. If we have a SY CMOS right from the FinFET, the leakage power would be substantially low. For the power optimization, we do not have anything. So we are marking it with a not applicable that is NA. So here we are done for the comparison for the details please go ahead and watch the low power episode that we have in this FAQ series and the link is there in the description. So here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide. 
performance optimization so here this slide and the next slide i will talk about the timing optimization that is done in the vlsi domain and again i am emphasizing that i will talk about the generic methodologies and in generic terms so in your company you may have some company specific terms which your responsibility is to correlate with the things that i am talking about here first generally the timing closure is a combinational effort of first year spent on the methodology development script development kind of recipe development so these scripts uh, generally maybe tools accept the tickle right generally these are the tickle scripts we are talking about which are maybe easily accepted by the timing tool in case you do not have a proprietary language for the timing tool generally this is a tickle and just for your information we have entire series on tickle if you want to learn it it's there and i provide the url in the description of this video so that you can directly jump off to the tickle series next we have month of block level and top level final physical implementation the physical implementation is the physical design part and there we spend our months because we want to develop and uh, we have to eradicate more errors in the physical design we have an entire episode on the physical design a link is provided in the description please go ahead and watch that to understand what the different steps and how the physical design is different in a custom design and in a asset design here we spend our months to make the physical design part error free from every aspect and the timing that, that is the post layout sta has to be very very efficient next we have a bit of several hundred manual noise and drc fixes so these are kind of fixes that we keep on looping back and forth between two or three steps that means maybe in layout then drc then lvs then again layout then drc lvs maybe some amount of engineering change order also comes and along with it a final multi-day pass of a full chip sign of analysis and physical verification so apart from drc there are a lot of other physical verification inside the vlsi design to check from every possible angle that the chip could fail so we have to make the chip fail safe at least for a certain lifetime so that the customer who is buying the chip maybe in form of smartphone or maybe in form of a wearable device that should last for a couple of years and here in any design house if you go this is a generic description however you will find the specific things in the company in which you are working or in future you may be working so next we have the nature of the timing closure has changed in the technology shrinking so timing closure before 65 nanometer was different and after 65 nanometer we are going down it, it's coming different and even below the 10 nanometer it is different so as we proceed with the step down that means we are down stepping uh, the technology node and that changed the timing closure methodologies entirely during the low power design hvt cells that means high threshold voltage and low leakage power are used so this is one of the things from the designer that comes not from the methodologies as we have talked here so that we use the hvt cells hvt means high vt due to this transition time increases and it becomes challenging to achieve the timing closure now, hence it is important to keep a balanced use of HVT, SVT and LVT cells. So HVT is high VT, LVT is low VT and this is I think uh, super low VT or something. You will find all these terms and their full names in your standard cell library. From the vendor whom you are receiving the standard cell, you should go ahead and ask them what is the meaning of all of them or what is the full form of all of them. So you may have different names from one vendor to another vendor and uh, these are kind of generic names that i have talked about specific names may become different you have to cross check all of them so we have talked about performance optimization that means the timing optimization as we make the timing efficient the performance that is f is equal to 1 by t that becomes faster now we continue our discussion in the next slide here we will go through some of the remaining points for the performance optimization and here it goes Nowadays, multi-million gate chips are used in order to increase the functionality in digital design. As the number of gates increase, routing becomes complex and in many nets need detour. That means when we are routing, we need to purpose different uh, areas and we have to uh, have a long, long routing. And now we have a chip that is high terahertz range and we have several million gates there. Detouring of the net adversely affect timing closure of the design. So this detouring may be necessary for the design to act like as it designed but however it impacts the timing. 
A good floor plan is used to avoid congestion, nets detouring to achieve timing closure. That means with proper floor planning, we avoid congestion. That means we do not pass all the lines from a main area. That means it becomes congested. And we avoid net detouring in this way. And this helps in the good timing closure. That means a higher performance. Crosstalk delay and noise are dominating which affect the timing closure adversely. By double spacing between the aggressor and the victim and shielding, crosstalk can be avoided. Here we are done with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Area optimization. So here we will talk in brief details about the different area optimization methodologies. And again, I am emphasizing, I will cover in a generic manner. Company to company specific measures or methodologies will be there. And sometimes these methods are very, very secret to the company's success. So you should not disclose them to the public. And this video is for learning purpose. So you can correlate, come back to this video and correlate the methodologies for understanding. Area optimization. Area optimization does not always mean area shrinking. So this is the term. First of all, is not that we are shrinking the area every time. We are optimizing it. That means we have to get an optimum area so that the design is properly functional, performance is there, good leakage power, uh, dynamic power, etc. All those things are there. So area optimization does not mean always the area shrinking. It means optimization. Next, source code modification, RTL description style is done as synthesis tools are very sensitive to the coding style. You can see at RTL level, we can also do something for the area optimal as we pass through the synthesis tools because different synthesis tools are having different algorithm inside them. Identify static signals that is register enables and simplify them. Next, pack the register with orphan logic that were inferred as standalone gates by the ASIC synthesis. So in your company which you are currently working or in future whatever company you will be working, you may find some of them or all of them or different methodologies altogether. Don't panic because this is a general guideline and there can be a variation because the technology world in VLSI is a super fast changing area. Load planning is the first step for the back-end or physical design in VLSI design flow. As I have mentioned in the video description, you will find our full episode on physical design. There you will have the details why this is the first step. Next, it is a design step to estimate cheap area and wear length by considering the optimal placement of digital blocks and their inter. In addition to that, I would like to speak that in today's world of VLSI chip design, lot of macros that means we purchase block from other companies and we directly implement in our physical so these are hard macros maybe these are in layout format already and you cannot change that also you must consider while you are optimizing the area next we have the classical floor planning methods that are normally used to increase packing density to minimize the total chip there are some classical methods there are some advanced methods nowadays which are used for the packing density to be optimized and that should minimize as much as possible obviously for the chip area they do not consider the chip boundaries, that is the outline, but modern floor planning methods deal with fixed outline floor planning. These are methodology things that you will find in your company or in future whatever company you will join, assuming that right now you are a graduate. Floor plan also needs to consider whether there is sufficient routing area between the blocks so that the routing algorithms can complete routing tasks without experiencing congestion. We talked about the congestion, right? The dealing with the congestion is uh, right at the floor planning stage and this is one thing that the area optimization we need because we need to manage everything. That means there is the macros, we need to plan itself, we need to place our digital blocks, everything and at the same time we should not have congestion. That means one area is too much dense and another area is too much less dense so everything should be balanced and that is the purpose of the area optimum and at the same time we meet our timing performance that means the performance of the chip as well as all sort of power are in check so here we are done with our area optimization and in today's episode we have covered all the types of optimization i have touched based in a very generic manner because these methods are trade secrets of a company and every company want to keep them secret so they are winners in the market this episode is for education so generically i have speaked here and your company which you are right now working or maybe in future working assuming you are a graduate you will find your own knowledge your own working knowledge there so this is a video for the beginners assuming you are a graduate to understand what is the power performance and area optimization in vlsi so here we are done let's move on to the next slide 
Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.